You are listening to the Snowcross Podcast, presented by Amsoil. What's up? It's Haley Shanley and Matt Skubik. It's Wednesday. You know what that means. Nothing. It means nothing. And nothing is exactly what you'll pay in shipping at amsoil.com when you spend $50 or more and enter promo code FREESHIPSNOWX at checkout. That's free ship S-N-O-X, at checkout. That offer is good through the end of the month. Without further ado, we are getting down to biz. Matt, the votes are in. The people have spoken. Who are our fan favorites? So coming in third, getting 17% of the votes is your pro-class rookie, Cole Katu. Cole Katu. Yep, good for him, huh? No huge surprise there, considering he is so good with fans. He's a professional fun-haver, but nonetheless, it's exciting to see a newcomer on the pro scene be a top contender for a fan favorite. Yep, and coming in second with 19% of the votes is the two-time reigning champion, Elias Seashull. And he won it last year, coming in second this year. He's doing pretty well. That's for sure. And our winner, who is actually joining us today on this podcast from Team Lavalli, Kyle Pauline. Hello. Hello, Kyle. How are you? Good. How are you doing, Haley? We're good. I have Matt here as well. Hey, Matt. Hi, Kyle. How's it going? Good. How about yourself? Doing well. Just uh, trying to find ways not to go crazy. <laughs> it's the ongoing struggle. Are you eating every meal as if you don't know where your next meal is coming from like the rest of us? No, just, I guess, just more kind of getting bored, I guess. of I don't know. Brittany and I really don't like to cook a lot. <laughs> like, normally we go out to eat probably probably like once or twice over the weekend. And, and so that's been kind of different i guess now now it's our tradition has been from going out to uh, doing takeout so right on is it is it kind of feel like an outing like a date it's exciting to load up in the vehicle and just go get takeout like it's an excuse to get out of the house (laughs) absolutely i was (laughs) i was just talking to one of my best friends and he was like yeah i don't think i've worn jeans in six weeks (laughs) 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 and i said I said the other day we went and got takeout, and I said I put jeans on just to go in, in the for the car ride. <laughs> get takeout. I said I said it felt like I was going somewhere or doing something. <laughs> yeah, so lots of outdoor time, which has been good. Mountain bike, run, um, or just bike on the roads too. Um, but here it's um, we almost got all of our snow gone finally here. Um, but it's still like there's there's still snow in the woods and spots and um, so the ground is still I would imagine frozen. Um, so yeah, I, the biking's pretty as far as mountain biking goes, it's really non-existent here um, unless I travel south somewhere. Nice. I saw you were out <laughs> catching some rays and sunning the whites on the sandy shores of Ironwood <laughs> just a couple days ago. <laughs> Did you get any sweet tan lines? <laughs> Yeah, so, again, yeah, finding things to do. <laughs> but, um, yeah, that was just one of the one of the days we were outside. But, yeah, I don't know. Recently been doing, um, I guess, kind of a lot of running and uh, running and, and taking, uh, taking our dog for lots of walks and car rides and stuff. <laughs> yeah, there's not a whole lot going on up in the UP up there. No. Like, you know, fortunately... You know, it it's. I think we've had four cases in our county, like, and I don't even know if there's any active right now. I haven't heard about it in probably a couple of weeks, but, um, so it's kind of weird. Like, we're really sheltered from any anywhere that it's like really affected. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's kind of weird because it it could seem like it could seem like why are we why are we like staying in our houses and stuff because it doesn't feel super real in some ways. Um, but, uh, but no, I, I think we're really lucky that we're kind of sheltered and that it's quiet up here just because, you know, we've been fortunate that it hasn't, uh, hasn't Taken over. Yeah. It hasn't gotten like super bad here. Let's get down to business, Kyle. You are once again, the fan favorite. Can you tell us how it feels? <laughs> it was awesome. I, 
I um I was out walking on the ski hill yesterday morning and Brittany called me and said, Hey, guess what? I got some good news for you. And um I was I was so pumped. It's been a while. You know, I've I've been fortunate enough to win it in the past, but I think it's been like four years or so. And um and so yeah, it was just it kinda came to me as a surprise and I wasn't sure, you know, the season got cut short and it was just a it was a weird year. So it uh it was definitely a really cool surprise, like considering, you know, everything that that happened this year with our season ending early and um it's not getting a race in Grand Rapids and Lake Geneva, so um I was pumped. Mm. Yeah, it's awesome, man. And to have the season cut short when it did in Michigan, how much of a bummer was that? I was Honestly, I, I got to see the track, and I was so excited to ride that track. That was probably the biggest bummer, was just that track looked so gnarly, and it looked like they put so much work into it. And and uh, I, I never got to count for myself, but somebody told me there was like 30-some whoops on it. <laughs> and I was just like, oh, my God, it's going to be wild out there. And, uh, yeah, I sure hope that we get to go back next year. Um because it looked like that was going to be just an awesome race course. So that uh, that looked like a lot of fun. That was that was the biggest bummer for sure for me about that weekend. Now, why do you think you've been like so successful in winning fan favorite awards? Do you think you're relatable to a lot of like snowcross fans, or what do you what do you relate this success to? Um, I would say you know first of all, like when I first joined Team La Valley. Um, you know, Levi was a lot more, um, I would say he was a lot around a lot more cause he was still racing and he was just such a good role model for myself. Like he was always, you know, always stressed about, you know, spending time with the fans and just being available and positive and having fun. And, and, um, so he really helped, he really did help groom me, you know, just, to to be a good role model for the sport. And, um, and now like, and I just turned 29 and I think this will be, this will be, gosh, I lost track, but I think coming up next year, like my 18th or 19th year of racing. And as I get a little bit older and I've been in the sport for a little longer, like I just really have come to cherish and enjoy like the different experiences that I get to have with the fans and with the people. And I try to make a point to be, to be present, I guess, for lack of better terms, just to, just to be present and not distracted when I'm visiting with the fans. Cause, cause it is really cool. It's a really cool and unique experience. The fact that, you know, there's people that'll take, take time out of their weekends to come watch us race. And, um, when you just stop for a second and think about it, that's a really cool thing. And um, so I just try to constantly remind myself of that, how fortunate we are to get to go out there, do something that we love to do and perform, you know, for, for all these fans. And so I just feel like one of the, the easiest and littlest things that I can do is when I'm there at the races with them is like for me to give them my hundred percent attention and focus and just, yeah. And, and just enjoy that experience with them and, and um, I, so I don't know if that's it, but I guess that's kind of that's how I look at it, I guess. <laughs> no, and that's great. You know, there's there's a lot of unfortunately people in not I'm not saying our sport, but a lot of sports where, you know, the people are get bad names because they don't want to take time to, with their fans or whatever the case may be. And like, that's great that you do, because realistically, if we didn't have any fans at these events we wouldn't be able to go racing exactly exactly yeah like if we if we didn't have anybody to put on a show for well then there wouldn't be any point to put on the show (laughs) yeah exactly exactly for sure and you know snow cross like you know when you compare it to other sports obviously it's it's a smaller circle and i you know but one of the coolest things about that is you know even just motocross, like motocross to me, I really think it's cool and, and I enjoy, I enjoy watching it. And, but I mean, even just motocross is, you know, another level bigger where it's so much harder to, to interact with the riders. 
um, just because it's, you know, it's a bigger sport. Whereas, you know, with snowcross, like you get to go right in the pits, you get to, you know, most people I think will give you a tour of their trailer and, and actually see right in the rig. And I think from a fan's perspective, it's, it's really cool because, you know, I guess I don't know how many, how many sports out there, you know, you can say you can do that and get that close and, you know, access to, to the riders and to the rigs and, and just see everything up that close, you know, firsthand. Kyle, everyone that knows you knows that you have this larger than life personality. And I think even those that don't know you see that on camera, this personality of yours, did it always seamlessly translate to on camera, your personality or early on in your career? Did you have to learn to turn it on because perhaps you were a bit camera shy? I would say, you know, maybe being more of a veteran now that maybe it comes a little bit more naturally now. And, and again, I really think that, um, Levi was just a really great role model for me um, in those early years of my professional career and just seeing how he, how effortless and flawless he looked on camera and interacting with different people. And um, I just think that taught me a lot. But, um, and I think the easiest thing to do, one of the things that he used to tell me is like, the easiest thing to do is just be yourself. Mm -hmm. And, and I think once you just keep it simple and try to be yourself and, and, let go of the rest or let go of trying to appear a certain way or say the right things or <laughs> um i just think that makes it easier and it comes comes more naturally that way then well let me ask you about that so i i would say that any rider who 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 runs with team lavalli you guys all are just so personable you work the media in the best way you are you guys are you know yourself as a fan favorite you're so fan friendly is there any sort of like media training that goes on within the team that we don't know about kind of like they do with nascar drivers or is it like for yourself where you just have such a good t team role model with levi i think um well in years past we did have not so much camera training but we did um through polaris um we had a few years where we did some social media training um but yeah i think it is just a combination of um you know levi being such a good role model and and i would just say like you know i love i love all my teammates they've been they've been a blast to hang out with and um I just think they're really good people too, and uh, and I don't know if that's that makes it appear or come across as like you know them being more natural on camera, but uh, I think I think all of us really value uh, the fact that you know we're lucky that we get to do this, and it's supposed to be fun, and it's important for us to to keep it fun, and. Um, I think we always just are reminding ourselves of that and, and trying to be a, a image of that, I guess, trying to be a, a message to others that, hey, you know, like at the very core of this, like we all started doing this because we love to drive our snowmobiles. We love to race with each other. And, you know, because sometimes the interference in your head, you know, worrying about all these different things out of your control can can make it seem not that fun at times. Um but, you know, just constantly reconnecting with that, that, you know, like every, I would, you know, say most of the drivers out there, we all started doing this because we really, really enjoy it. And it's a lot of fun. And I just think that for us on the team, like we try to do a good job of reconnecting to that and, and sharing that message with others. Now, you're so much more involved in the sport than just racing the national circuit. You've always helped out with the Learn to Ride Clinic at ERX in December as a coach. Just last year, you raced a regional or two. Why not save yourself and preserve your health for the national circuit? Why do you do what you do? Is it because you love it so much and you're having fun? <laughs> like, I didn't do any regionals this year. I did one last year, I think it was. Yep. Um, because we had a we had a kind of a rocky Duluth, and um, we ended up going to Quadna the weekend after, and uh, it actually it was the intentions were to get just get some more seat time in, in an environment where it was a little less pressure, and uh, it ended up being so fun, just you know going out there and racing and and feeling like it was for the sheer joy of it, and. Um, 
so that was I think that was exactly what I needed at that time and um, you know this year yeah I would say I I preserved myself a little bit more but um, as far as the clinic goes that's been something that um, I've been fortunate to take a part in for the last number of years and I just think that's that's at least that's one small way that I can try to give back to the sport because I know when I started racing at 12 um, gosh it was just so cool whenever I got to talk to any of the professional drivers at that time or just just get an autograph from them so like I, I guess I don't know if it's the same for the kids now um I would think I would think you know part part of it is the same I just I remember like it was my dream you know at 12 years old just thinking like gosh how amazing would that be to be a professional someday and just and anytime I got to talk with those guys so I just want to um yeah I want to try to give back and try to try to be you know a good role model for those kids I guess so you know, talking about kids here, I have a quick question for you. Like, what kind of advice would you give to a kid, you know, who is kind of struggling with the sport, kind of maybe running sport light, maybe a junior class, and he wants to jump up to sport? And like you said, he wants to get to the pro class. What would you say to him? Like, what would you say to help him maybe be a better role model for other kids or whatever the case may be? How can these kids grow and continue to stay involved within the sport? I would say looking back on my career, um, you know, it really depends on where you're at in your career. And I think that once you get to say maybe like the pro light or pro level, it's less about quantity of time on the sled. Like obviously practicing a lot is is a good thing, but I think it comes down to more of quality and really fine tuning your skills. But I think for like a junior rider, sport light rider, the kids that are still developing their skills, um, I know for me, I just rode all the time. And we were really, really lucky where we had a track um, like a quarter of a mile from my house. And I would get out, I'd get out of school and I'd go to the track and I'd get you know, 45 minutes to an hour of riding in before it got dark. And my dad always said, that's 45 more minutes or an hour more than somebody else got. And I think, I think when you're younger, I think that quantity trumps quality a little bit. And I just think seat time is so key in it. And I don't necessarily think, because I, I understand it's hard for, you know, it's hard for a lot of people. They might not live right near a track and, um, to you know to load up every single day and get over to erx or uh to one of these practice tracks but i think just time on the sled is really key time on the sled and just especially when you're young staying connected to the fun of it um and keeping it fun mm -hmm. and i think those are two of the things that really helped me i guess come up through the ranks mm -hmm. you are a guy that likes to have fun that is for sure you even have your own holiday KP Day. <laughs> you had the, the second annual KP Day at ERX. For those who don't know, can you describe what KP Day is? KP Day started, um, it was something that I wanted to do for a couple years. And I thought, how cool would it be just to have full control of the track layout at ERX and, um, and just build whatever you want. And so finally last year, I got a few guys together and and uh, they were on board to do it, and we just built some really cool jumps, and and ERX was cool enough to really let us have some freedom with jumping over the road and, and these different things. And um, I wasn't sure if KP Day was, was going to happen again this year or not, but um, Chris Olin from from Rock Speed, he stepped in. He's like, hey, like, that was really cool. Like, I want to be I want to be a supporter of this. And so Rock stepped up, and – and helped us out uh, with the second annual KP day. And I don't know, I don't know if we built the jumps too big, but I remember, I remember the first year being less scary. <laughs> <laughs> I think this year we went really big and I just, it was a little bit windier. So I don't know if that was part of it, but um, 
Well, we had some booters out there this year, but it was just so much fun. Like it's, we've done it in February both years and it's, you know, later on in the season where you've done a lot of practicing and, and it just feels good to have a break from a break from, you know, just the, the motos at the practice track and at that time of the year and just have a day where you're just not worried about anything, not worried about, you know, in a certain lap time or racing guys on the practice track and how you stack up or how your speed is against somebody else. Um, and just going out there and having fun. And, uh, so it's always, always just like a refreshing thing for me. And, um, yeah, I'm just really pumped that we got to do it again, you know, this year too. <laughs> That's cool. Talking about Levi here, you know, you've been involved with him for quite a few years now, and he's obviously a pretty rad dude, you know. He's X Games medalist, snowcross championships, you know, world record distance holder. What's your coolest moment you've ever shared with him? Yeah, I think so. It's hard. It's, it's really hard to... <laughs> just like when somebody asks a question like that to say what's your one coolest thing or what's your favorite food it's it's always hard for me to like pick one um gosh you got me stumped <laughs> <laughs> i don't know back uh back in some of my earlier years on the team there was a couple there was a couple times in the fall that he he let us jump into his foam pit and he taught us how to backflip a uh a 110, a Kawasaki 110 into his foam pit. And getting to do that was pretty darn cool. I bet. I that, bet. That was something that I didn't I didn't envision me ever getting to do in my lifetime. <laughs> that was uh, that was pretty darn cool. That and uh, there was another time where he had a slip and slide at his house with freestyle ramps going into the lake. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That was that was pretty darn fun too. <laughs> so, there's been some good memories over the years. <laughs> well, I have one more question for you, Kyle. You know, you you finished sixth in the year end pro points this year. What is it going to take for next year next year for you to squeak into the top five, or maybe even finish on top? Yeah, I would. You know, I was uh, I was really bummed out because. Um, because I felt like I was finding my groove again. It's been it's been a little while, you know. It's been a few years since I've had a really good season, and um, this season felt different in in a couple ways. Where I thought I was finding my groove again, and I think um, I think continuing to to use my experience to my advantage. I think I did that better this year than than ever before. Was just trusting more in my experience that like I said I've been doing this for 17 or 18 years and and just trusting myself that hey I've seen a lot of different situations here and I can figure this out um because I I would imagine it's the same for other drivers too but it is very hard to go into a race and have everything figured out exactly or you know, have that course figured out exactly how you want to run it, um, you know, 100%. Like, there will be certain sections where you're like, okay, I want to execute this section in this way. But then there's other sections where you're like, I'm not really sure the best line through there. And in the past, I think that I would second guess myself a little bit and just be like, ooh, how am I going to figure that out? Or, um, or, or I guess the better question is, will I be able to figure that out quick enough? And um, I think I've really leveraged my experience better this year, uh, just saying like, hey, I've been I've been doing this for a long time. Like, I'll get that section figured out. Um, and I think just continually doing, you know, continually using that to my advantage. And um, And I think you just can't ever give up learning. I think you have to continue to learn and just – even though I've been doing it for a while, like there's always going to be new lessons to be learned. And I think um, just, you know, using those tools to my advantage, I think is what's going to, you know, allow me to have more success, you know, in this next year. Yeah. And, and you know, Kyle, 
you know, you're a veteran of the sport now, and we very much appreciate you seeing you on the track, seeing you off the track. You're a role model for kids growing up. Even these pro guys, they all look up to you. You know, you got a great personality, great mentality, and we very much enjoy seeing you at the races. <laughs> Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. It's um, it's a blast being there, and uh, I'm really fortunate that I get to do it. And um, yeah. And just, uh, it's a blast. <laughs> well, well, thank you again for joining us today. And congratulations once again on being our fan favorite 2019-2020. Thank you very much. Well, have fun this off season. We will see you in November. All right. Sounds good. I cannot wait. <laughs> All right. See you, Kyle. Bye, Kyle. Uh, Take care. We hope you enjoyed that chat with Kyle Pauline. Once again, you can head over to amsoil.com. When you put $50 or more worth of product in your cart, you'll get free shipping when you enter promo code FREESHIPSNOWX at checkout. That's all for today. We'll see you next Wednesday at 6 p.m. Central for the next Snowcross podcast presented by Amsoil. You are listening to the Snowcross podcast presented by Amsoil. Amsoil.